Welcome inside with the insiders. Tom Pellicero, Ian Rappaport, Mike Garofolo on another one of those Tuesdays, guys, where all of a sudden news seems to come out of the woodwork, and we've got a lot to talk about on this show. Baker Mayfield has a new home. We will get to that story momentarily. Could Jim Harbaugh be coming back to the NFL? We'll get to that as well. But first off, very surprising news earlier today that Ian and I broke out of Tennessee where John Robinson, the general manager, has been fired by the first place Titans. There is a substantial amount here to unpack, but Ian, I want to get to you first for your thoughts. It is extraordinarily rare to say the least to fire the head of your personnel while you're in the midst of a playoff chase and winning your division and all likely a playoff bound for the fifth time in seven seasons, my understanding has been they just weren't satisfied with the direction of the roster. How do you understand it? Yeah, I mean, this is one of those, I got to say, when, when we first started digging on this this morning, I thought there was no way it could be true. I just, I thought there was no way. It doesn't make sense to fire a GM during the season. It doesn't make sense for a first place team to fire a GM. And I know everything wasn't perfect. Um, there are plenty of plenty of examples of things not being perfect. I just honestly, guys, did not expect this to happen. But you do some more digging, you kind of look into it, and there's a couple potential reasons, I would say, why John Robinson may have been fired, because the reality is I do not know for sure. First-round draft picks have been a problem. Uh, Traylon Burks this year looks like it's going to be a really good one. From Isaiah Wilson, uh, one example, really never played for them. There's been a couple other first-rounders that they either – uh, reached on or simply did not pan out. Drafts have been real, real hit and miss. There's been some free agent misses. Vic Beasley stands out to me as as maybe the biggest. A lot of money spent on the edge, not a lot to show for it. Julio Jones trade was a bad miss. Um, and then you, you come off, uh, and I do not know for sure if this is the reason, but you come off a, a situation with a big hit to the culture with the Todd Downing DUI uh, off the team plane. I mean, these are all factors that go into it, but I cannot escape, guys, the fact that A.J. Brown played them last week, dunked all over them, and then he gets fired a couple days later. And I know there was some disagreement in the building about whether that trade should have happened. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like Mike Rabel was against the trade. It sounds like John Robinson was pro-trade. Now the question yeah. is how much uh, of a say did ownership have in that one from a uh, football economic decision standpoint, if you were expecting to extend A.J. Brown, the deal that he got with the Eagles is right where you would expect it to be. It's not like he got some astronomical deal uh, with his next team and you go, well, yeah, I understand it, right? And I know that he's had, you know, knee surgeries in the past. So see, maybe you think, is this guy going to hold up? He plays a physical style of football. And so I didn't mention that point to uh, someone uh, who's been involved in NFL business for decades uh, on all sides of the table. And I said, you know, I, I had heard that that was part of their decision making was about how much, you know, would he be able to play going into a new contract that you would give him. And the person said, well, then that's good GMing to say he's not going to be part of our long term plans. Let's turn it into something. Let's turn it into Traylon Burks, who, um, you know, is, is hurt again, but it's hurt because he got whacked making an unbelievable catch against the Eagles the other day. So yeah. It's a little bit of the up and down. It's a lot of the up and down when you look at what John Robinson has done. There are drafts where he absolutely crushed it. I believe it was 2019 was the year that the, they took A.J. Brown. Uh, Who did they take in the first round? I'm blanking on this one. Oh, Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons, I believe, was that, Jeff was Simmons. that one? Yeah. Um, and uh, Malik Hooker was in that uh, draft class as well. And then there's some draft classes where he took some swings and completely whiffed and I think it was uh, 2017, maybe. They didn't get anything out of there for their entire draft. So, uh, you know, I, I read the local reaction to it, and it was like, well, yeah, there's all these misses. And then nationally, it's kind of like, well, there's all these hits. And the truth lies in both of them right now. So I just, when I look at the timing of this, it was clearly, to me, a message to the fan base, to everybody. Yeah, it was that guy's fault that A.J. Brown was playing against us instead of with us the other day. Amani Hooker, I believe the hooker you were looking for there with the Titans, I Mike. I, I was told that uh, you said Malik, different player, different team. He was a yeah, Colts draft bad. pick, but close enough, right division, similar position. Uh, Amy Adams Strunk, who is the Titans controlling owner and somebody who puts a great deal of care and attention into that team. I'm told that she did address the staff earlier today. 
didn't go into great detail, but in essence said this was not something that she arrived at quickly. She had been thinking about it and the time felt right to make this move. I also can't help but think back to some things that Mike Vrabel has said publicly on multiple occasions, and I'm paraphrasing only slightly here, at one point when he was getting a lot of questions about the offense, he said something along the lines of, well, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is how we have to play. In other words, reading between the lines, it was, we have no yeah. receivers. Yeah. We have to play this style of football, which is ball control, run it, hope that we can grind the game to a halt here, which is putting a great deal of stress, of course, on your offensive coordinator, Todd Downing, is trying to figure out, okay, how do you get around some of those things that you lack? Traylon Burks looks like a really good player, but he's had a bunch of different injuries through the course of this season and has ended up missing time. So it does happen to come two days after A.J. Brown had more touchdowns, catches, and receptions than the uh, receiving yards than the entire Titans receiving core combined. That part of the timing uh, does sync up here. Also, the fact that teams this time of year, they go into their college meetings, everything else. If you've arrived at the decision, John Robinson is well, not going to be your general manager. I, Making the move sooner than later, getting a jump start on the coaching search or the uh, GM search does make sense, Ian. So, I was wondering about the timing of this. Do you think it's possible that they maybe made this decision to make sure that they didn't go deep into the playoffs? Like, if you were going to fire him and you had some doubts and they go deep in the playoffs and win, you can't fire him. Like, only reason this makes sense now is to make sure that you do it before they start winning playoff games. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, or if you're thinking then that if you get deep into the playoffs, then you've got a lame duck general manager going to the Senior Bowl and the Shrine game and everything else. But I think those things factor in as well. But again, once you've come to that decision, even though there's not a ton of roster tweaking to be done, this time of year, it does make sense on some level uh, to simply say you're moving on. Let's get to Baker Mayfield now, who does have a new home minutes before we began taping this episode. Claimed off waivers by the Los Angeles Rams. A fit that does not put Baker in a position to make a playoff run. We'll see whether it puts him in a position to play, which at this point with uh, John Wolford, Bryce Perkins, no Matthew Stafford, it's certainly possible, though unlikely he would be ready to start or even play on Thursday night. But what's important here for Mayfield, and Mike, I'll go to you on this, seems to be he gets with Sean McVay. He gets into this offense. He gets someone around him that for the next five weeks can evaluate his talent, can see how he reacts to it. Everybody had good things to say about Baker as a leader, as a guy, as a teammate. In Carolina, L.A. has some long-term questions right now about their quarterback with Matthew Stafford uh, suffering that spinal cord contusion. Uh, this yeah. is a free look-see at a guy who was the number one pick in the draft four, four or five years ago and won a playoff game. Let's not forget that for the first time in decades with the Browns less than two years ago. Yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't cost you much. It's a little bit more than a million dollars for the rest of the season here. You need the help anyway. Um, and... Uh, it gives you a look at a guy who maybe didn't have the best supporting cast in Carolina. Now, um, you know, the Rams are banged up, but they still have at least some uh, some weapons there. And uh, you got Sean McVay and a, a scheme that could help him, you know, a little bit of play action. I mean, that was the plan with Carolina was to run the ball effectively and have him work off of play action. Um, not quite sure that everything really worked out the way that everybody kind of saw there. And I don't know that Ben Mac McAdoo, the offensive coordinator, and he's on record as saying he's not the biggest ba Baker Mayfield fan from a couple of years ago. So I'm uh, not sure that that was a great fit either. So and listen, it, it, it gives us a reason to keep an eye on the Rams down the stretch, gives a little intrigue uh, as to what they might be doing uh, into 2023. So I like it. It's entertaining. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, I, I think this is really good for Baker. I mean, I know that he wanted to be, I'm sure, with the 49ers. I know he wanted to be in a team that was, you know, poised to make the playoffs. The Rams obviously are not. That's, I get it, but Sean McVay is a really good coach. If anyone is capable of rebuilding this dude and getting him pointed in the right direction, McVay can. And I think, guys, he led the Browns to the playoffs. That was amazing. Something has happened after his shoulder surgery. I know it was his opposite shoulder, but clearly the mechanics are not where they were. He now lands in a really good place, not just with McVay, but also right by some of the better quarterback tutors around, all seem to be based in California. Really good chance to kind of restart his career. Maybe it's just as a backup for Stafford and maybe, you know, more for the future. I don't know, but seems to be, even though the team is not good, a perfect place for Baker to 
see what he can do for the future. One other story I do want to hit on, and Ian, you and I had this story on Sunday about the possibility of Jim Harbaugh returning to the NFL. Teams doing their research on him. Multiple teams believe that if he were offered the right thing, he'd, he would consider coming back, even though Harbaugh, after the Vikings interviews and going back to Michigan last year, said the door is shut. The NFL is trying to reopen that door here. I, I look at Indianapolis, where he was a member of the Ring of Honor, even though I, if I'm not mistaken, he had a losing record as a starting quarterback with the Colts, but somebody that people there have an affinity for as captain comeback. And it would be the type of bold move, changing culture that maybe make people forget about Jeff Saturday and other things that have gone on in Indianapolis. Also has a relationship with Chris Ballard, who's the Colts GM. They're not the only team that I would anticipate is going to at minimum consider Harbaugh as a possibility here, Ian. But what's your read on the chances that we see Jim Harbaugh back in the NFL in 2023. You know, I don't think it's zero. I think it does benefit. Our story probably benefits Jim Harbaugh. You know, I assume he's going to get another extension after this. Probably should. College coaches get extensions all the time, so whatever. Um, but I'm sure that this gives him more leverage. So I'm sure he's not against us writing this story. But I think there's a non-zero chance that he heads back to the NFL. Um, and it, for a couple good reasons. I'll give you two of them. One, how much better is he going to get at Michigan, right? Like, he's returned to his alma mater. He's led them to almost the highest of highs. You never know for sure if you're going to win a national title. They might. Um, so it's actually, you know, no one would fault him if he was like, all right, I'm going to go try back for the NFL after I did everything for my alma mater. I think that's totally fine. The other thing is the Colts is clearly a place that has a special place in his heart, and the fit is really good. So if it's the Colts and it's this year, that actually makes a lot of sense for Jim Harbaugh, who clearly has at least some sort of inkling of wanting to be back in the NFL. Yeah, um, yeah the buyout's like $3 million, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe even less than that. It's, it's, it's not a big number, and it's, it's something that uh, an owner with plenty of money uh, would just say, yeah, whatever, fine, I can cut that check for you right now. Um, right. And, I, and listen, he could, tell, he could tell me all he wants, the door is closed, I don't believe it. Uh, I absolutely don't believe it. You explored it last year with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, you'd clearly have an interest in doing it again. Um, and also, maybe it's going to depend on how this goes for him uh, with the with the playoff here in, in college. I mean, uh, if they wind up winning it all, maybe he feels like, all right, my work is done here. Time to jump back to the NFL. If they go out in their first game, which would be a, a massive upset, um, probably feels like maybe I should come back and, uh, and finish this thing off. Or maybe he feels like it's never going to be done at this level, so i got to go back to the NFL. We'll see. I mean, nobody knows what Jim Harbaugh is thinking from day to day, let alone hour to hour or minute by minute. I've covered him before. Mm. I know exactly what that's about. It would be quite so we'll a see. wild card. He's an interesting individual, and there are not many guys who have won as many games in the NFL or had the type of success that he did over especially his first three years in San Francisco. Meanwhile, elsewhere, we got quarterback drama, guys. What else is new on this show? What exactly are the Jets going to do as they move forward here? Is Zach Wilson really going to get back onto the field? And what do the Falcons do at a time that they and everybody else, the NFC South, is technically still in it? We'll talk about all that next on The Insiders. But the biggest game, they get back Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson for the touchdown! The Jets are coming to your house. Dazzle, dazzle! And winning in front of you. Terrific drive by the Jets. And who's next? The Jets are going to win it! They're not afraid of anybody. The Jets off to their best starts in 2010. It's intercepted again! Interception number three. Zach, what are you doing? A bitter loss for the Jets as the win streak comes to an end. It's been a year for Zach Wilson, who is continuing to work behind the scenes with the Jets to try to smooth things out from a mechanical perspective. I talked to Robert Sala on Sunday before the game, and he said, you know, Rob Calabrese, who's the quarterback's coach, spending all kinds of extra time with him, so is Mike LaFleur. That's all hands on deck to get him back to being what we know he can be. But for now, guys, let's go inside the drama with exactly how this whole thing plays out for a Jets team that took the Vikings to the wire last week. They've got a bunch of marquee wins 
throughout the course of the season. Mike, I'll start with you. Robert Sala keeps saying the intent is for Zach Wilson to play again this season. Mike White, not terrible, not great in his second start here. Do you believe it? Are we going to see Zach Wilson at some point starting for the Jets if they remain in playoff contention here? Yeah, well, ho, oh, hey, ho, oh, wait a second. You just threw in a little caveat there at the end right there. Uh, if they remain <laughs> in playoff contention. Where are they right now? If they lose this week against the Bills, drops them even further. So I, I, don't, I just I don't see them hanging in there just based on uh, how the AFC is lining up right now. So uh, I'm going to say that we're going to see Zach Wilson again. Forget your caveat because I think the Jets are going to be out of it at some point. We will see Zach Wilson on the field again. Mike White's been admirable. Uh, he's not that dude. Not that Zach Wilson's been that dude, but he was drafted to be that dude. And draft position still matters in this league. It matters very much. We see it with free agents that haven't quite panned out, still getting paid uh, to the level of their draft position. Uh, we've seen guys continue to get chances because of where they were drafted. So, uh, yeah, I, I, the, the notion that we haven't or we won't see Zach Wilson take another snap for the New York Jets in our game, uh, I don't believe that's accurate. Zach Wilson going to play again this year. Save this clip. I might be right, I might be wrong. Save it either way. I'm going to go with wrong. I'm going to go with wrong. Yeah, definitely wrong. Because here's why. Mike, I don't while care you have you no faith in the Jets. No, you have no faith in the Jets. I do. I think the Jets are going to push for the playoffs right until the end. Are they going to make it? I don't know. But I know they're going to push for it. And then Mike White's playing well. I know you don't like him, clearly, maybe because he has great hair and you don't have any hair. Um but he's playing well enough, like, I don't understand under what circumstances he would play. And, you know, mop-up duty doesn't make sense. Plus, remember, he's got to be active on game day, which he hasn't been either. It's, I know the Jets would like to play him, but the reality is, best-case scenario, they don't because they're too good and they need to keep marching toward the playoffs. Elsewhere, the Falcons also hanging in the playoff chase. The NFC South... Would have been really wide open if the Bucs hadn't rallied the other night. Every team would have been within, I believe, one game of first place at that point. Instead, Tom Brady finds a way, takes them down the field a couple of times. They get a big win. Now the Bucs firmly in control at 6-6 six and six of that division. But the Falcons still in it here. Arthur Smith, for the first time, I know he said recently there is no quarterback situation. Well, now, after a few more losses, saying that every position is up for debate. Ian, I go to oh, you. Man. At what point, if at all, do we see Desmond Ritter starting in Atlanta? Well, so this was the way it was explained to me is that if the Falcons are out of it, then we may see Desmond Ritter. But you know how it goes. Like, if you start to feel like your team is good enough around every, if everything is good enough except the quarterback, and you're still in it, and you have someone who's burning a hole in your pocket, like Desmond Ritter, maybe it makes sense. To me, Maybe it makes sense. We'll see what the Falcons end up doing. I don't know. Um, but if they did go to Desmond Ritter, to me, this is the perfect time. Either you're just out of it, which you're out of it anyway, or he's the guy that plays 5% better and brings you back. Mariota's been solid. Some of those plays this past week were not solid, um, including that awesome pick we just saw right there. So I think it, may, it would make a lot of sense, honestly. Yeah, I, listen, I think Marcus Mariota might give you the best chance to, to compete right now, and that's why I think... Maybe that Buccaneers win the other night when it looked like it was going to be a loss and that division was going to be crunched together may have actually been one step more toward Desmond Ritter taking over here. We shall see. I mean, I, I, Mariota hasn't really given him a great shot to win with how he's played, though, lately. So that's <laughs> take a little bit of the air yeah. out of that balloon. But we know that, that Riz, Ritter needs some more time there, a little bit more seasoning. So you go to him. It's not like you're punting on the season. I mean, your record is what your record is. It's not like... I always equate yeah. it to, I was covering the Giants in 2004. They had Eli Manning. They were 5-4. and four. They probably make the playoffs if Kurt Warner remains the quarterback. But they had dropped two straight, and Tom Coughlin's like, I got to turn this thing over to Eli Manning. Yeah, I'm giving up the season. I know I am because quarterbacks were much less prepared to play in the NFL back then than they are right now. It's I not that go. kind of Mike a situation. They're, you long. know. What? Get him out of here. I got to go. Mike's just it's talking not, He's not even long. working today. I'm going. Bye. Nice knowing you guys. He's had enough. All right. Me and Mike right, are going to stick around, though. More insiders coming up after this. We haven't even talked about Odell Beckham Jr. yet, so Ian's really missing out. You guys all stay with us. We're Sorry to make you work on a Tuesday, around. Ian.
Dak Prescott said Odell Beckham Jr. is a sweet guy. Well, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons still dragged him down to courtside seats. Sorry, Odell, no sweet for you on this one. But everything else, quite the recruiting visit to Dallas. Uh, which raises a question, Mike, before we even get into where Odell potentially could land here. If you were getting uh, wine and dined on a recruiting visit, where would you want to be taken? What would you like to do? Uh, well, I mean, it depends where you are. There's different places in different towns. Uh, I'm nearby uh, to Manhattan here, so there's plenty of uh, excellent whiskey bars in Manhattan. Uh, the Flatiron Room has a great selection. They got some jazz playing up front. You got the wall of whiskey right in front of you and uh i'm not paying since i'm being wined and dined so you know i'm actually asking him to get up on the ladders in the locked lockers behind us uh you know better get something out of there if you're whining and dining me that'd probably be the way i would go that's probably the one time right that you don't have a salary cap violation if you're entertaining a free agent you can go to the top shelf you can open up whatever you want ten thousand dollar bottle whatever whatever you might want to do it's all the world yeah. is your uh, your oyster at this point. All right, give me a snap reaction here, Mike, based on where this is played out. Odell's taken the three visits now. Who knows? There could be additional ones. We've been talking for weeks now about the reality that it's the, what, second week of December almost here. It's getting close to the end of the regular season. The odds that Odell can ramp up and really contribute in 2022, at least before the playoffs, kind of get slimmer and slimmer the longer we go. How does this all end? How does it end? You got one minute. Yeah, the... The consensus is he's not going to be contributing for a team before the playoffs. And it's funny. It's like the Cowboys were gung-ho, and then they had the medicals. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. We're, whereas Giants and Bills, I sense skepticism to start, right? And it was almost kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, you know what? If it's an option for us as we get closer to January, then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll explore it. So, um, snap. Uh, I think he signs with either the Giants or the uh, – I'm sorry, with the Bills or the Cowboys. I'll be surprised if he's a Giant. Um, and I think it, it's it's maybe right before the postseason or, or right into the postseason before that happens. I thought this was going to happen quickly. I am uh, off of that now. And in either case, if it were the Bills or the Cowboys, unlike the Giants, you're not joining a team that really is starving for production at the wide receiver position. This would be very much an insurance policy and one more weapon that you could integrate as you get into January and try to manipulate some of those matchups, which is exactly what the Rams did last year. Thank you very much to everyone for joining us here on The Insiders. We are on every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time across all fast platforms. Also catch every episode on demand later at the NFL's YouTube page for Mike Garofolo and Ian Rappaport, who once again didn't stick around for the end of the show. I'm Tom Pelissero.